Hello and welcome to my third lecture in the Organic Chemistry Unit of Chemistry 30. Today we'll be talking about alkenes, alkynes, and their cyclic analogs. Um, as, as I promised, I was going to give you a diagram of the organizational structure of the, our knowledge of the hydrocarbons. So we have the hydrocarbons and we break them up into two broad categories the aliphatic hydrocarbons and the aromatic hydrocarbons. The aliphatics are made up of three broad homologous groups. The alkanes, which are saturated, and if you recall, saturated molecules are singly bonded throughout. The alkenes and the alkynes, which are unsaturated hydrocarbons. Alkenes, of course, contain at least one double bond. Alkynes contain at least one triple bond. On the other side of the hydrocarbon uh, organizational structure, then we've got the aromatics. And the aromatics contain compounds of benzene. Benzene is, is a specific hydrocarbon molecule with a six carbon ring. And uh, there'll be more on that later. In fact, I think my subsequent lecture is on the aromatics. Getting back to the alkenes then. Alkenes are extremely important industrial compounds. Ethene, which is the smallest of the alkenes at C2H4, lies at the heart of a great many uh, manufacturing processes. The general formula for the alkenes is CnH2n. And as we said, they're unsaturated in that they possess at least one double bond somewhere along their backbone. Referring back to stereochemistry of grade 11, alkenes have a, an AX3 configuration around each of the carbons in the double bond. Uh, the molecule therefore forms a trigonal planar shape around each of these two atoms. I think I have an example here. Yeah, we're going to look at cisbutene on the left and transbutene on the right. Now this cis and trans is, a, is another form of isomerism. Um, that you're responsible for. It arises with double bonding. And um, the reason it arises with double bonding is when you have a single bond, the atoms are able to rotate at the end of that bond. In fact, they spin freely. But when you have a double bond, that rotation comes to an end. That's, that second bond, that pi bond, gives rise to a rigid structure that won't rotate. As a result, you end up getting two configurations. One's a cis configuration, and the second is a trans configuration. And these are isomers, but they're not structural isomers. The, the atom to atom arrangement of the molecules is the same. It's just that they take on different shapes, different conformations. And I'll show you what I mean right now. So on the left here is one, two, three, four. This is butuene. On the right, one, two, three, four. This is butuene. But you'll notice a different difference in the molecule. Um, it's easy to diagnose for cis or trans isomerism by drawing a line like this through the plane of the, mole of the double bond in the molecule. Looking at the cis configuration then, you'll notice that the hydrocarbon backbone is above that line on the left, comes down through the line, through the double bond, and then again comes up above the double line. So the, it can be said that the entire hydrocarbon chain is above the plane of the double bond. In the trans configuration, though, um, you'll see that the hydrocarbon backbone starts above the double bond plane, goes through the double bond plane, and comes down beneath the double bond plane. It actually transits the double bond. Uh, so as a result, we have uh, two different molecules um, that, in, in point of fact, have different properties. Alkynes are also unsaturated. Their general formula is CnH2n minus 2. Somewhere along their carbon to carbon backbone, they possess at least one triple bond. In terms of stereochemistry, alkynes have an AX2 general formula around each of the carbons involved in the triple bond. Therefore, alkynes are linear through this triple bond. And we'll look, take a look at butene to demonstrate this. Here's a line diagram for butene, and there's carbons wherever the lines end. So there's a carbon there, a carbon there, a carbon there, and a carbon there. So one, two, three, four. So this uh, point here is one of the carbons that's sharing the triple bond. 
and you'll see that it's got an AX2 configuration. There's a 180 degree angle between this bond and this bond. Under Vesper analysis, 180 degrees minimizes repulsive forces around that carbon, which is why this is linear. And the same Vesper analysis applies to this carbon on the right. Excuse me, I've lost my mouse. This carbon on the right. There's 180 degrees between this bond and this bond because that minimizes repulsive forces around this carbon. And hopefully you have a, a working memory of your Vesper analysis rules. In this course, we restrict, restrict our study to molecules with only one double bond or one triple bond. There can be multiple double bonds or multiple triple bonds, uh, but we, we don't deal with, with those in this course. As we've said, the general formula for the alkenes is CnH2n. This is also, however, the general formula of the cycloalkanes. Uh, as a result, a, an alkene can well have a, a structural isomer that's a cycloalkane. And we're showing you the example of cyclopropane and propene below. Both have the same chemical formula, C3H6, but each has a unique arrangement of atoms. And here they are. So on the left, we've got one, two, three carbons in a cyclic structure surrounded by the six hydrogens. On the right, we've got three carbons in a linear arrangement surrounded by the six hydrogens. So same chemical formula, but very different structural arrangements. So these are stru structural isomers of one another. In a similar manner, alkynes have a general formula of CnH2n minus 2. But so do cyclic alkenes. So again, structural isomers exist between a, an alkyne and a, a cycloalkene. And the example I'm going to show you is between cyclopropene and propine. Both have the molecular formula C3H4. So on the left then, we've got a cyclic structure, one, two, three, three carbons making it propene, the double bond between two of the carbons, and the carbons are surrounded by four hydrogens. On the right, we've got a straight chain alkyne, three carbons with the triple bond, and it's surrounded by four hydrogens. So same uh, chemical formula, but um, very different structurally, and they'll have different properties. Naming alkenes and alkynes is similar to how we name alkanes. However, um, the approach to numbering the molecules is different. In alkanes, we number the longest chain from the end closest to any attachments. In alkenes and alkynes, we also number the longest chain, but it has to be the longest chain containing the unsaturated bond. And we start our numbering from the, uh, from the end of the chain that's closest to that unsaturated bond, not from the end closest to any attachments. And so that's the lecture. Let's look at several examples before I conclude for the day. Hept-1-ene. So hept, we're going, to look at, we're going to find a molecule with seven carbons in it and a double bond between the first and the second carbon. And that's what we see here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And there's a double bond between the first and the second carbons. Hept-1-E. Here's a cyclic structure with one, two, three, four, five, six carbons. And there's a double bond between two of the carbons. So this is going to be a cyclohexene. Um, no number required. We always assume that the double bond is between the first and the second carbon in the ring structure. And we're going to count clockwise or counterclockwise if we need to only, if there are also attachments on the ring. Here there are no attachments, so no number required, and this is simply cyclohexene. 6,6-diethyl-oct-3-ine, oct-3-ine, so we're going to see a longest chain with eight carbons in it, and a triple bond between the third and the fourth carbons. On the sixth carbon, we'll see two attachments, that are both ethyl in length, which means that each will have two carbons in length. And here it is here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. On the sixth carbon, we see one ethyl side chain and a second ethyl side chain. 
So this is an interesting enough diagram. And again, you'll see the linear configuration through the triple bond. Here's a complex molecule. Let's see if we can find the longest chain that includes the double bond. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So this is a nonine molecule. And you'll notice that I started counting closest to the end near the double bond. There's also a side chain here, which is a propyl group. And there's two side chains here, which are methyl groups. So this is one, two, three, four. This is four propyl, seven dimethyl. And alphabetically, methyl is before propyl. So this will be seven dipropyl, sorry, seven dimethyl, four propyl, non-2-ene. And again, we have to give a number to the location of the double bond. So again, seven dimethyl, four propyl, non-2-ene. Uh, these are complicated names that are mouthful, but once you understand the recipe on how to name them, um, it's a matter of practice. Here's a, an expanded molecular diagram. <clears throat> and you see the longest chain. I'm going to count it from the end closest to this unsaturated double bond. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So this, whatever else this is, this is an octene molecule. In fact, it's oct-3-ene because the double bond is between the third and the fourth, car fourth carbon in the chain. And there's a methyl group that's attached to the seventh carbon in the chain. So this is 7-methyl-oct-3-ene. <clears throat> Pent-1-ene will be a little uh, simpler structure. Pent, it's going to have five carbons in the longest chain. And it's going to have a double bond between the first and the second carbons. And you see that here. One, two, three, four, five. And there's our double bond between the first and the second carbons. It's a little shorter structure, one, two, three, four. So this is a butene. And do we need a number? I would submit we do. If there's two possible locations for the double bond, we need a number. And you can see there could be a butene with a double bond between the first and the second carbon, making it butene. But here the double bond is between the second and the third carbon, so this is butene. Finally, if you draw a line uh, through this double bond, you'll see that this is a cis configuration. So this is cis butene. Finally, for the page, we've got a longest chain here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. This is a nonine molecule. And the double bonds between the fourth and the fifth carbons. So this is a non-4-ene. Finally, drawing our double, uh, our plane, uh, rather our line uh, along the plane of the double bond, we see we're dealing with trans configuration. Pulling it all together, this is trans non 4 -E. Here we have a three carbon structure, linear structure, which has a triple bond. So this is propyne. Do we need a number? Well, if I put the triple bond here, it's prop one ene prop one ion rather. If I put the triple bond here, it's prop one ion. So the, the number doesn't give us any information, and therefore no number is required. This is simply propyne. Here we have a line diagram, which for what appears to be a 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 carbon hydrocarbon. Counting from the end closest to the triple bond, we're talking about pent 2 ion. And again, you'll notice the linear configuration through the triple bond, pent 2 ion. It's sort of a complicated one. The longest chain that includes the unsaturated bond is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So this is an octine. In fact, it's an oct 3 ine 1, 2, 3. It's got a side group here, which is an ethyl group. So this is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. This is 5 ethyl oct 3 ine Finally, for the page, we have a ring structure. And the ring structure has six carbons in it. One, two, three, four, five, six. And I need to count clockwise to minimize the number total associated with the detachment. So starting across the double bond, which is the rule, we've got one, two, we've got one, two, three, four, tetramethyl. 
3 propyl cyclohexene. So again, 1, 2, 4, 5, tetramethyl, tetramethyl, and this is 1, 2, 3, 3 propyl cyclohexene. And again, it's going to be methyl before propyl in the name uh, for, alpha, for alphabetical reasons. I think I've got four more questions and I'll conclude. No, that's the end of it. Okay, so thank you for listening. Hope you uh, took value in that. And we'll see you next time when we talk about aromatics.